Good evening and welcome to Charter House Vespers. I'm so pleased that you can join us this evening on the fifth Sunday in Lent, where we celebrate the new life that Jesus gave to his dear friend Lazarus. I invite you to worship with me in peace. Peace on each one who comes in need. Peace on each one who comes in joy. Peace on each one who offers song. Peace on each one who offers prayers. Peace of the Maker, peace of the Son, peace of the Spirit, the Triune One. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 11th chapter, now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, but rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and, Matt and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. 
The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Here ends the gospel reading. Today in John 11, we have a passage of great trial and high emotion, deeply disturbed and compassionate. Jesus is crying at the tomb of his friend. And the sisters are there multiplying the grief, the anguish. The crowd is there also to comfort the grieving sisters. It's a time of trial, difficulty. It's a time of deep loss. And that is why we are having today as our postlude the song, It Is Well With My Soul, a hymn that possibly many of you know I have been hearing this song and singing this song my entire life. It is well with my soul. And the story of this hymn is sometimes surprising, but it relates to the text in John 11. The author of It is Well with My Soul was Horatio Spafford. And he was born in upstate New York and he moved to Chicago in 1856. There, Mr. Spafford established a law practice and became a college professor of medical jurisprudence. He was active in his YMCA. He was a Sunday school teacher in his local Presbyterian church. He and his wife, Anna Spafford, bought real estate on the lake. They were having a very successful life, blessed with faith, children, land, money, knowledge, great work to do, and friends. But then, tragedy struck the Spaffords, not once, but over and over. The Chicago Fire of 1871 wiped out their real estate holdings. In 1873, the family doctor recommended a vacation. Anna and the children's ship went on ahead. On the high seas of the North Atlantic, their ship collided with another and sunk. Mrs. Spafford was saved, but all four of their children perished. Mr. Spafford got on the next boat to meet his wife in Cardiff, Wales, where the survivors had been taken. But while sailing past the point, the spot where his daughters had died, he wrote, it is well with my soul, the whole hymn to express their continuing faith and their trust in God. Then, in 1880, their infant son died. They went on to have two more daughters, and in 1881, they traveled with a group of Christian friends 
and settled in Jerusalem. After tragedy upon tragedy, loss upon loss, they embarked on a new life. And with their Christian friends, they established a hospital for orphans and families in need. Meanwhile, they had been close friends in Chicago with the musician Philip P. Bliss. P. P. Bliss said, it is well with my soul to music. And we have this song today to share our faith. A faith that sustains us through everything that life and this world can throw our way. Our way through the years, following Christ, through the pathways even of the seas, is the way of love in Christ. There in, in Jerusalem, this group of Christians lived with their Arab and Jewish neighbors in acceptance, in fellowship, and they dedicated themselves to serving. Even after all their tragedy, their community became known as the American colony in Jerusalem. Later on, a group of Swedish Christians came and joined them, and this required a move to a larger house. They purchased an Arab Pasha's home north of the Damascus Gate, and they continued to serve, helping children and families. During World War I, when famine and plague ravaged the city, the American colony operated a soup kitchen for the poor of Jerusalem. They also ran, with the permission of the Turkish governor, hospitals where they nursed the wounded from both sides of the conflict. Today, the Spafford Children's Center in Jerusalem Board of Trustees includes five descendants of Anna and Horatio Spafford. Today, the center is also served by Palestinian board members who bring the local knowledge and understanding of the issues that families face. These Palestinians that serve on the board of the Spafford Children's Center are not the unwashed, unwashed ignorant in need of evangelizing. They are the Palestinian Christians who have been Christians since the time Jesus himself, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and everybody with them lived there in Palestine in that very same place. People of God, friends in Christ, our faith is so strong. When war and violence tear a region apart, other Christians step in to help and sustain. The poet tells us that loss is the great lesson. In the face of loss, the Spaffords live to the full and their faith bears fruit today. In the face of loss, Jesus meets Mary and Martha. And in their words, we hear a tremendous confession and belief in Jesus. After Jesus and Martha converse about how Lazarus will rise again, and Jesus replies, I am the resurrection and the life, he continues and says, those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha's reply is the Christ confession that is this absolute key to John's gospel. The whole gospel. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. John tells us in chapter 20, 31, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Although it is Peter who gives this Christ confession in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in John it is Martha who provides the bedrock confession for the gospel. This should not be overlooked or swept aside. That a woman is a model of belief in John points to the reality, the truth, of women disciples in early Christian communities, Martha and Mary, and certainly Lazarus believe. 
Jesus calls us in John 11 to the resurrection and the life. He calls us to something beyond the resurrection, and that is the life. Life together. We see this way of life in the very next chapter when there's a feast with Jesus, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Everybody's there. The Spafford descendants, the children and families and their Christian friends, are all there in Jerusalem to this day, carrying forward the gifts of life with Jesus, called to the resurrection and the life. People of God, we are called to live together, nourished by the feast of forgiveness, giving of ourselves to others, knowing full well our losses yet walking with Jesus in peace and in joy. We are prepared by the story of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus to enter into Holy Week in faith and trust. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, thou hast shed tears for Lazarus, showing that thou art man, and then hast raised him from the dead, showing to the peoples that thou art the Son of God. There is none like thee, forbearing Lord. Thou doest all things for our sake as God, and thou sufferest as man. Make us all partakers of thy kingdom at the prayers of Lazarus. Dear Lord, we place into your loving care all of our concerns and burdens, all of our beloved family members, all of our relatives and friends and neighbors. Shelter us, we pray, with your loving mercy, and give your holy angels charge of all who cry to you for help in grief, in loss, and in storm. We pray that we may remain faithful and strong as we enter into Holy Week together. May your fellowship be strong and hearty as we walk together toward the great three days and Easter morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me for Vespers this evening. I invite you now to receive this benediction. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen.